All right. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it just seems so fast. <laughs> week to week, isn't it? Just boom. And there you are again. Another week's gone by. And Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you had all had a wonderful Christmas, you know. We've got lots of grandkids, so we always have a really good Christmas, you know. Uh, and that little one that we're watching on weekends, our great-grandson Everett, he's now, well, he'll be a year old here this week on the 4th, right? He is so cute. He just, he gives me that big smile because he wanted to eat some of my cereal, et cetera. You know? <laughs> and when I gave it to him, he made an even bigger smile, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, we are going back to Genesis this week, and there's some, some amazing, they're just amazing things, uh, that take place. But as always, let's open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your word. And as we open your word, may your Holy Spirit guide us as we study your word. And Lord, I pray that uh, anybody listening, you know, or watching or listening, that you speak to them. Even if you got to change my words in the middle of the air, <laughs> you speak to them. They need to hear from you. Thank you for all you do for us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's jump into uh, the book of Genesis. Now, as you remember, God created the heavens and the earth. God created Adam and Eve, right? And then they chose to sin. They chose to try to be like God, you know, to know the difference between good and evil. <laughs> you know, and there were consequences to their sin. They were cast out of the Garden of Eden, right? The ground for Adam is going to be much harder to work than it was in the garden, right? Eve is going to have all this pain in childbearing, right? And we'll have to presume that they understood what that meant, <laughs> you know. Uh, but so they've been cast out. We have this in uh, 315 where it talks about the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of Satan, right? And that may come into play here shortly. We, we don't know, it's speculation, right? But if we just pick up at the end of chapter three, so he, God, drove the man, you know, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he stationed the uh, drove the man out and he stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. So he's out of the garden. He can't get back in. Neither can we except for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We get back into, you might call the eternal garden, back into heaven. Right? We get into heaven because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ because our sin prohibits us from being able to go there. Same thing with them. See, their sin prohibited them from being able to go back into the garden. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now the man had relations with his wife, Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. <laughs> her first baby boy, All right? Now, I wonder if Eve and maybe Adam thought that Cain was the seed of the woman that was going to crush the head of the serpent, of Satan. And maybe they spoiled him a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. Because what happens next is shocking. Uh, just shocking. Verse 2, And again she gave birth to his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Right? So 
so Cain was the farmer, right? And Abel was the shepherd. And Abel, on his part, also brought, oh, excuse me, I skipped verse 3. And it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Okay? And Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. So Abel brought the best part to sacrifice you know, to God. Now you remember, there wasn't any death until they sinned, and then God had to kill animals to give them skins for clothes. And now we have this sacrifice, and Abel is sacrificing the best of what he has. He's bringing the best of what he has to God. Okay? Now, we don't know if God had already stipulated how that was to work, or if it was just Abel showing his appreciation for God. We don't know. God leaves uh, some question marks here. He doesn't really fill in all the blanks, you might say. Okay? But, anyway. Verse 5, But Cain, for Cain and for his offering, he, God, had no regard. Okay? So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. <laughs> He was upset that God would not accept his offering. Now, how did Cain know that God didn't accept it? We don't know exactly, but we have a conversation, right? And then the Lord said to Cain. Now, how he said it, he doesn't tell us, right? Did the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ show up on earth like he does in other places? Doesn't say that. Right? It just says, God told Cain. And Cain obviously knew it was God. Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? If you do well. In other words, he didn't do well. His offering was not doing well. Okay? So, but if you do well, right, things will be better. And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Hmm. Cain is the first one to follow the doctrine of works. He was farmer. He took his crops. We don't know which ones, apparently not the best, to sacrifice to God, right? To bring to God this offering. But he brought what he wanted to bring. Apparently not what God told him to bring. What he was supposed to bring, right? Now, there may not have been anything wrong with the fact that he was offering from the fruits of his work, but what he did not bring is the best. He did. He brought what he wanted to bring. And God said, nope, I'm not accepting that. And Cain got all kinds of perturbed. What? What? <laughs> you know, I can't do it my way? How many of us follow that pattern, right? We live our life thinking, I can do it my way, and I'll be fine. I don't have to believe in God. I can believe in whatever I want, or nothing at all. Unfortunately, for people who think that way, that's not what God said. God said, it's got to be my way. Because it has to fit into the 
the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus makes on the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I think Cain was supposed to go to Abel and buy an animal, a good animal, to make his sacrifice. And Cain said, I don't have to do that. I've got good stuff right here. I can take this. God said no. And then Cain got mad. He's mad at God because God rejected his way. And then things get really bad. And remember, these are the first two sons. This is not that long. I mean, obviously, he's old enough to be a farmer and, and a sheep herder or whatever animals that uh, Abel had, right? But, verse 8, And Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field. Some translations say that Cain invited Abel to the field. So it's a total premeditated deal, but it's confusing as to the translation. But nonetheless, they're in the field. And Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. So Cain is mad because God rejected his chosen sacrifice. So he's mad at Abel because God accepted Abel's. Isn't it amazing how evil works, how sin works? Adam and Eve ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now their sons, one son kills another son. Wow. First generation. Didn't take long, did it? First generation. Why do people who sin hate the righteous? Why is he so mad at Abel? He was mad at God, wasn't he? And yet all of a sudden he's so mad <clears throat> that he kills his own brother. You know? Now, how many people were on the earth at this time? Not very many, right? Uh, we don't know the total number of children that Adam and Eve had and children they had, et cetera, and whatnot, you know. But 930 years later, when Adam died, there were probably a million people on the earth. We don't know, right? But nonetheless, because we have a story about Cain, <laughs> right? Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Of course, God knew where he was, right? God knew exactly what happened. Wonder why he didn't interfere <laughs> and keep this from happening. But of course, Abel's in heaven, so he's he's all right. <laughs> and Cain says, Well, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? I don't know. <laughs> Why do we think we can lie to God and get away with it? And God asks us a question, right? I mean, he already knows the answer. We know he knows the answer. So why do we think we could lie about it instead of just facing our sin and repenting? See, what we'll notice here is Cain never repented. The evil the sin had so taken control of him that he just got farther and farther out in left field. Just, I don't know why we say that out in left field. I used to be a left outfielder. <laughs> you know, I always kind of said, well, it's not such a bad place, you know, <laughs> when I was out there with my ball glove, right? <laughs> anyway, <coughs> excuse me. 
Cain never repents. Am I my brother's keeper? God said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Your actions. Not good. <laughs> and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. So he was very good at farming. Now the God says the earth's not going to give you anything. You're just going to be a vagrant and a wanderer. Right. Cain said, The Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. You just murdered your own brother. And now you think the punishment is too great? Again, no repentance for what he had done. Right? He could have repented, been restored in his relationship with God. He said, no, and my punishment is too great. He's all worried about his punishment, the consequences of his sin, not of his sin, not for his brother, not for his mother and father, Right? He just killed their son. How can we get to be so selfish so fast? It's amazing. But it tells you about sin and how what a big deal it really is, right? And say the only way to resolve the sin problem, sin and death, was for God Himself to die on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for us, shed his blood for us. Amazing. Cain says, Behold, thou hast driven me this day from the face of the ground, and from thy face I shall be hidden, and I shall be a vagrant, a wanderer on the earth, and it shall come about that whoever finds me will kill me. Who finds you? <laughs> Who's looking for you? <laughs> you know? Then we know what happens in the future. The Lord said to him, Whoever, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him should slay him. I wonder what that sign was. <laughs> it said, this is Cain, <laughs> right? I don't know. It doesn't tell us what the sign was, right? Then we read about the future of the line of Cain. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, out from the presence of the Lord, out on his own, without God. You say people can choose to go out without God, but whew, not good. He settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And Cain had relations with his wife, and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city Enoch after the name of his son. And it goes on to tell us about the lineage of, of Cain. They were going into the future. We don't know how long Cain was out there without a wife before he had a wife and then had relation, had a son, right, etc. But if we drop down that in verse 23, 
and his great, great, great grandson, right? Lamech said to his wives and two wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to my voice, you wives of Lamech, give heed to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me. He killed, Cain killed a man, and now in his lineage we have his like great 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 grandson, and he's killed a man. They say the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, right? Remember, he's out there away from God. He's not talking to his sons and his grandsons and his great grandsons. And we do not have the length of the lifespan of Cain. Remember, Adam lived to be 930 years. So we would have to assume Cain might have lived 800 years. We don't know. Doesn't say. Right? Cain may have been alive even at this point. I wonder... If he ever had remorse in all the years, let's assume he lived three, four hundred years, I don't know. Did he ever have remorse for the murder of his own brother? When he had sons, did he think about, what if one of my sons killed the other? We don't know. We don't know. And drop down to verse 25, and Adam had relations with his wife. Again, I'm sure this was <laughs> not a rare occasion, <laughs> right? But, and they gave birth to a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed me another offspring in place of Abel. So Seth was born after Abel was killed. For Cain killed him. And to Seth, to him, also a son was born. He called his name Enosh. And then men began to call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh. Right? Where else do we see the name Yahweh? Outside of in the early chapters when it talks about the Lord God, right? But Moses at the burning bush, right? <clears throat> Yahweh. Okay, all right, 1008. We got time to cover something else. I want to jump into chapter five, okay, and show you something because uh, next week's lesson in the quarterly doesn't pick up till chapter six, <laughs> starting in what, verse six or something, right? We'll be talking about Noah. But I have little notes. You can't see it in here very good, right? But, you know, Adam lived 130 years, became the father of a son in his own likeness, according to his image, and named him Seth. So Seth was born when Adam was 130 years old. Right? Now, how old was Cain, Cain at this point? Abel's already been murdered. Uh, don't know. Could have been 100. Right? Seth lived 105 years, became the father of Enish. So that's 235 years from the creation of Adam, total, right? Enos lived 90 years and became the father of Kenan. Now we're at 325. Kenan lived 70 years and became the father of Mahalalel. Now we're at 395, <laughs> approximately, right? Mahalalel lived 65 years and became the father of Jared. 460 years. Remember, Adam lived to 930. He's still around. Okay. Jared lived 162 years, became the father of Enoch. 622 years. So in the creation of Adam. Jared lived 800 years and became the father of Enoch. And he had other sons and daughters. 
Hmm. After he became the father of Enoch. My, my bad, I'm sorry. I didn't read that correctly. Because Jared lived 162 years, became the father of Enoch, and lived uh, 800 years after that. So how old was he? 962. <laughs> right? And he had seven. All of them, of course, had other sons and daughters. Now, all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died, and Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. All right? Now we're at 687 years. Adam's still alive. Okay? <laughs> Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, right? And he was not, for God took him. One of the two men that never died. God just took him because he walked with God that close. Now, it says, right, he became the father of Methuselah. And then it says he walked with God 300 years after that. Must have been a pretty <laughs> righteous guy, right? So good that God didn't let him die. Right? Now, isn't that interesting? So Enoch becomes the father of Methuselah. What do we know about Methuselah? <laughs> the oldest man that ever lived. Okay? 969 years. Let's keep reading. <laughs> okay? God took Enoch, and Methuselah lived 187 years and became the father of Lamech. 187 years, okay? Methuselah lived 782 years after he became the father of Lamech, and he had other sons and daughters. Okay? Now, Remember it says, Enoch walked with God and he took him. Methuselah lived 187 years. So now we're at 874. Okay? So Lamech is born. Adam is still alive. Because he died at 930 years. Right? All the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he died. Okay. Lamech lived 182 years and became the father of a son. Now we're at 1056. So Adam is no longer with us. But up to this point, right? Adam is still there. Adam is still there telling the story of the Garden of Eden how he came to be all this time. Adam is there. Right? Keep that in mind. Now, they're all having children, okay? And society is growing. He say, maybe there's a million people. I don't know. Lots of people. But Adam is still there. Anybody want to know how this all started? Go talk to Adam. I wasn't born. I was made. <laughs> God formed me out of the dust of the ground. God formed your grandmother, you know, Eve, from my rib. Tell the whole story. Adam is now gone. Lamech had a son at 182. Right? 
he called his name Noah, which means comforter, mm -hmm. saying, this one shall give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands arising from the ground which the Lord has cursed. Hmm. Maybe he thought he was the seed of the woman. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Jesus is the seed of the woman from the Virgin Mary. Lamech lived 595 years after he became the father of Noah, and he had other sons and daughters, so all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. Right? Noah lived 500 years old, and Noah became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So now we're looking at 1,556 years, right? After the creation of Adam. At this 500-year mark. What happens at this 500-year mark? It came about when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Now, were the sons of God, you know, some say, well, that was the sons of Seth, right? And the daughters of men were daughters from the Cain lineage. We don't have any evidence of that. Some say the sons of God were actually angels or fallen angels, right? We don't know that for sure either, but things get really nasty on the earth as a result of this, right? The Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. Everybody lived way past 120 years, right? Now he's saying it's only 120 years. And the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. These are the big people. And yes, we have fossils of people that were really, really big. Are they the Nephilim? I don't know. <laughs> it's not clear. <clears throat> But we know in the New Testament, you know, that you should, a Christian should not marry a non-Christian. The godly should not marry the ungodly. And maybe that's what transpiring here, right? You know, maybe these daughters of men didn't have a choice. I don't know. We don't know the details on this. But what we do know is things get really nasty, right? You know. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them and those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown, okay? Interesting. I heard a preacher one time talking about Eve being the very first female ever. The angels, the cherubim, everything else is all male. Now, why would you need a male if there were no females? I don't know. But he pretty emphatic that they, everybody was male until Eve. And so <laughs> that they all like, boy, these these women, females, man, they are looking really, really good, you know. <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> if that was the case, I don't have any hard evidence to that. And that was so long ago I heard that sermon that, that I uh, can't even uh, say any more about it. Right? But we get to verse 5. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Right? Things get really bad. 
Now, the story that these were angels were taking women as wives kind of conflicts with uh, Jesus saying that angels don't marry. <laughs> so, I don't know if I can go along with that story, right? Uh, but what I find interesting, the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and was grieved in his heart. So guess what's going to happen, right? When Noah is 600 years, because it takes him 100 years to build the ark. When Noah is 600 years old, we have the flood. Now let's back up for a minute. Noah is 600 years old. Methuselah was 187 when he had Lamech. Lamech was 182 when he had Noah. You add them all together, you get... 969 years, the same age as Methuselah. Now, Methuselah basically means it will come when I die. So for nearly a thousand years, he's walking around with the name, it will come when I die. And in the year he died, the flood came. Do the math. <laughs> 187, 182, 600, 969 years. Okay. I always thought that was really interesting. Well, we'll be moving into uh, <laughs> all that water <laughs> next week. That's our lesson in basically chapters 4 and 5. Right? And the first part of 6. <laughs> uh, it's just... Sin is so... So bad. Spreads so fast. Just amazing. You go from eating of the fruit, rebelling against God, against what God said, right? To murder in the very first generation. To murder of your own brother, right? Lord God Almighty, thank you. Thank you for the lessons and the warning that this provides to us about sin in our own lives, what is it gonna result in? Help us to repent unlike Cain and be restored with you. And that repentance, of course, is only complete when we accept your sacrifice in Jesus Christ, whose blood has cleansed us from our sins. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for these lessons. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. Well, that's our lesson in Genesis today. God bless you all. Have a great week and Happy New Year. <laughs>